at the man who shot two officers during a four hour standoff in Jackson County. But first. He told me to take me and my kids and get out. A meth lab bus forces one business to shut down and several people out of their homes. And that is our top story tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Deborah Lenz. And I'm Rick Lord. Thanks for joining us on Eyewitness News. Families are out in the cold tonight after a meth lab bus closed down an apartment building and a business in downtown St. Albans. Eyewitness News anchor Elizabeth Nareka was the first reporter on the scene. She joins us now live in our studios with the very latest. Elizabeth. Rick, acting on a tip, state police busted two people for making meth in their apartment building, forcing them to close down Main Street for nearly three hours. The threat of contamination has forced several families to leave their homes and a business owner who has been around for 50 years to temporarily close up shop. I, know, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't have no idea. Bonnie Hill doesn't have a place to live. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go now? A place for her, her fiance, and her two children to call home. Does it make you sad? And a business owner who put decades of hard work into a family-run business, all to see it go down the drain. We've been in business 50 years, and it's just a, a shame to think that the mentality of anybody that would use or or manufacture these drugs. Both forced to leave because of a meth lab found in an apartment in this building. They became uh, kind of collateral damage to this person's a illicit criminal trade for profit or their own addiction. Acting on a tip, state police came here to an apartment above Chandler's floor and wall coverings on Main Street in St. Albans. Troopers arrested Justin McCoy and Jared Stover. In the apartment, they found lots of meth-making materials, even a how-to guide on how to make meth and numerous guns. As technicians take out the trash and troopers take these guys to jail, several families are fearing for the future. It won't affect our quality of work, but it will affect these people that live in these apartments. They should have a little bit of respect for the children, for my kids, than to have a meth lab right beside my apartment. Several of these families still do not have a place to stay tonight. McCoy and Stover are charged with operating a meth lab, possession and conspiracy. Both are in the South Central Regional Jail. Reporting live in the studio, Elizabeth Nareka, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Liz. A Mingo County attorney. A quiet business district shut down after a meth lab was found today. State police say they got a tip about a meth lab being operated in an apartment over Chandler's on Main Street in St. Albans. Police say when they searched that apartment, they found all the materials needed to make meth, even printed instructions on how to cook it. They had to clear the building and shut down Main Street for several hours. Justin McCoy and Jared Stover were arrested and charged with conspiracy to operate a lab. Police are looking for a third person who lives in that apartment as well. Around the region tonight, a shootout, a standoff with... lab bust in St. Albans last month continues to create problems for other residents in the apartment building. Last month, state police busted a meth lab in an apartment above Chandler's floor and wall covering. Today, Simon Environmental from Jackson County was at the site to clean up the building and the apartments. Lisa Bragg is one of the tenants who could not return to her apartment because of a high concentration of a meth chemical. She wants to get some of her belongings back and sent the company a list. So that it would cost me $1,500 to get my items back, which shocked me because being homeless and having to replace everything in your life, I mean, do you have $1,500 like that? Rita Simon of Simon Environmental tells 13 News the $1,500 is the cost to decontaminate the items. Our 13 News Gil McClanahan will have much more on this story tonight on 13 News at 7 and at WOWKTV.com. Millions of Americans
contaminated and has left has to be left behind. WSAZ Charleston's Michael Highland is here and Michael more than a month later this woman is finally getting a look at what could be salvaged. Yeah she even had to pay to get her own stuff back but a lot of it is gone forever. After the police and news crews leave these meth busts the effects are felt by the victims for a long time. Danger contaminated condemned not just these apartments everything inside them. Wow, it's double bag. Lisa Bragg lived in this building in St. Albans for a few years. I didn't know it was meth. I was concerned about the fumes. Um, it was horrible. Police arrested these guys in early November and charged them with making meth. When we were coming back over here, um, we had nothing but the clothes on our backs, like other people here who were forced out. Too dangerous to go back in, so everything got left behind. You are basically left with nothing. It is like a fire or a flood. Then someone broke in. She just found out her computer was stolen. All my work that I've done, I mean, everything that I've worked for for years is gone. My life, my business, gone, wiped out. She paid $750 to get back what could be salvaged. A crew started work Thursday, cleaning up the site putting things that weren't contaminated in these bags. What made it through? Wall hanging that I got from Prague. Eddie Chandler is the landlord and owns the store downstairs. He says after the bust, he refunded everyone's deposits and rent for the month. I thought that I had done everything that, that I could possibly do to uh, keep, keep that from happening. But, you know, it's... Uh, you can only do so much. You can't live in the apartments with the people. There's no programs to, to, to help people that are basically forced down to the cold. There's nothing. And, and the meth heads are back out on the street within 24 hours. That's infuriating. Bragg also didn't have renter's insurance. Her situation isn't very common, so Stephanie, she says, it's been very difficult for the last month just trying to get help. Uh, try to imagine that. All right, thanks, Michael. And Bragg and her landlord are looking into a program uh, called the Crime Victims Compensation Fund, but it's unclear what, if any, help they'll get. It's not tolerated. Allie and her... relating to the robbery and running from police. Reporting live in Huntington, Chris Kittinger, Eyewitness News. Chris, thank you. 2011 is starting off to be a busy one for state police when it comes to meth. This morning, county officials boarded up a trailer in St. Albans that contained a suspected meth lab. State police busted the lab last night. It's the sixth meth lab busted by police since the beginning of the year. Last year, the county boarded up 38 buildings containing meth labs. Troopers credit the public for being on the lookout and calling the meth tip line. If you suspect a meth lab in your neighborhood, please call troopers at 558 77 77. Remember, you can always remain anonymous. An early morning fire at Heiner's Bay. Huntington Newsroom, Dara Wilcox, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Dara. An early morning shooting sent a St. Albans man to the hospital. The victim, 47-year-old Roger Cobb, has an extensive criminal record. Last night, Cobb's girlfriend, Onda Womack, apparently called her daughter Dana to come pick her up from the apartment following a fight with Cobb. Neighbors say the two had been fighting a lot recently. They also say Dana told them that Cobb attacked her when she arrived and that he was choking her when she grabbed a gun that she knew was hidden under the couch and fired at Cobb. The Canal Bureau of Investigations is handling the case. No word yet on any potential charges or on Cobb's condition. A tip led officers to another meth lab today. State troopers made the bust early this morning at a house on Ohio River Road in Cabell County. These three adults and a child were in the home at the time. Tonight, Dennis Kinder, Jesse Bird, and Amy Patrick face charges for operating a meth lab. A Dunbar family is without a home because of their neighbor's meth lab. As Eyewitness News anchor Gilbert Corsi reports tonight, when it comes to meth, some people say the laws are so outdated, innocent victims are getting left in the lurch. I told my husband, I said, there's, he's got a gas mask. And 
He said that's not good. The couple's instincts were right. This week, Chuck and Charity Burgos came home to a raid on a meth lab in their neighbor's Dunbar apartment. He endangered my children's lives. Charity still gets emotional when she thinks of drug teams condemning the entire building because of the toxic fumes. It doesn't get any easier. The family of five couldn't even go back inside to get their belongings. You have a four-year-old that doesn't understand and just wants to go home and just wants her cat. We're just day to day. Day by day on donations, Chuck's a volunteer fireman and institute and says he was recently laid off from a security job. We're told two of their kids missed school this week because they didn't have clean clothes. The family's been staying at the Super 8 up the road. Right now it's just a night-to-night -night basis. So check out at 11. It is a grim reality that more people are facing after a renewed push to move meth out of the mountain state. Remember this scene from December 2009? People staying at the Eagle apartment complex in Jefferson were also forced out when officers found meth. I don't want to move. And here in St. Albans, 11 months later, another apartment building condemned. We're finding them everywhere. Um, the public's more aware of it and they're calling us and it's allowing us to center on these individuals. When you're displaced like this and if you ain't got nothing, where do you go? I mean, I think the governments need to step up and take a look at this matter and try to help the people that need it. West Virginia does have what's called the Crime Victims Compensation Fund, but meth labs don't apply because the law was crafted back in 1981, long before families were losing everything because of their neighbors' dirty deeds. When we brought this to the attention of some high-power lawmakers, they told us it may be time to look at this statute again. In this situation, you know, this, these people aren't direct victims, but they're certainly suffering significant damages. Change in legislation can't come fast enough for this family caught in the crossfires of meth. It hurts. Gilbert Corsi. Tremendous. Eyewitness it hurts. News. The Burgoses say their landlord has not offered any help. Some local churches and Dunbar city leaders have chipped in to get them a hotel room through the end of the week. Police are investigating an armed robbery that happened just before nine demanded money saying he had a gun and then took off. For Capital City, this is Eyewitness News. People are amazing. Giving back goes a long way. A family can start to heal on the heels of a meth lab that left them homeless. And that is our top story tonight. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Nureka. And I'm Gilbert Corsi. Welcome to Eyewitness News. We begin tonight with new hope for the Dunbar family who was living day to day. You'll recall the family of five was forced from their home with nothing but the clothes on their backs when police found a meth lab in their neighbor's apartment. Well, after hearing this story earlier this week, Eyewitness News viewers stepped up in a major way. A closet full of clothes, more on the bed, plus bears, blankets, and backpacks. I actually think that's all that's going to fit there. Charity Burjoyce now knows the kindness of strangers. People are amazing. This week, Charity, her husband Chuck, and their three children faced life on the streets after their neighbor's meth lab got their entire apartment building condemned. It doesn't get any easier. a four-year-old that doesn't understand. Eyewitness News viewers saw this mother's pain and stepped up to help. A couple of ladies had come in and said they wanted to make them blankies because they seen on the news that they wanted their blankies. And yesterday they got their blankies. Blankets and so much more. Community members, one after another, bringing food, toys, money. The 17-year-old even got a guitar. Charity says what some kids may not want anymore, their children now cherish. They're not crying anymore. It turned her tears of sorrow into tears of joy. I appreciate every single person that has helped us and everything that you have brought and donated is amazing and um, may God bless every one of you.
couple have been staying night to night in the Super 8 in Dunbar. Their oldest son was sleeping on the floor, but after our report, the manager upgraded them to the only suite in the motel, and a local nonprofit called and offered to pick up the bill for 30 days. And tonight we are learning more about one of the other tenants in the apartment, a woman who was caring for her infant grandson in a very similar situation to the Berjoices. If you care to help them out, send an email to us at news at WCHSTV.com. Meanwhile, the war on meth rages on in the Kanawha Valley. A Marmette man was caught in a stolen car and says he actually paid for it with meth. That's the excuse officers say Jerry Means gave last night during his bust. An officer picked him up using the department's new electronic plate reader device. His testimony that he was renting the car from a woman in exchange for supplying her with meth. Troopers say he eventually bought the car with two grams of the drug. Means is charged with possession of a stolen vehicle, delivery of methamphetamine, and driving without a license. A major drug bust in Boyd County, Kentucky. Boyd County deputies arresting several people, including two men from... Snow continues to push in across the tri-state and Canal Valley. I'm meteorologist Chris Bailey. We'll tell you how much...